Hello everyone, in this video I will cover 9 common mistakes data scientists make when they start their career. I personally made some of these mistakes a few years ago and my hope with this video is that you can learn from my experience and stop making them yourself. Without further ado, let's start. The first mistake I want to talk about is not spending enough time understanding the problem. This probably is the area where junior data scientists are the most inexperienced. At the start of each project, they tend to jump head first into the data and the code without taking a step back and clearly thinking about the added value they could bring in. What I learned from experience was that scoping the full delivery of a project right from the beginning was extremely useful later on to have a clear vision about what data science will bring at each step. Spending time understanding the problem is particularly helpful to define the project assumption map the available data sources, list the success metrics that translate the business needs, and finally, provide a realistic roadmap to meet the time constraints. There's no magic in here, really. A successful data science project goes along with a clear understanding of the problem and an organized method to solve it. The second mistake is not knowing the basics. This goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Not having solid knowledge of probability, calculus, or machine learning will affect you in the long run. You may sure find your way around by importing packages like scikit-learn, Keras, TensorFlow, and fitting models without understanding how they work. But if your models do not perform as expected, you won't be able to diagnose what went wrong. You won't be able to tell whether the hyperparameters are way off, or if the model is not suited to the problem at all. As a data scientist, you should never consider machine learning models as black boxes. You should at least know the basic concept behind them, how they work, how they behave to particular type of data, for example missing data, and how their hyperparameters impact their training. In order to brush up on the machine learning foundation, I have compiled a list of tutorials and videos that you can have a look at. Uh, these are free, of course, you can find them on the internet, either on YouTube or GitHub. For example, if you want the probability course, you can look at Harvard University channel, also the machine learning course from Caltech, which is really good, and finally the MIT introduction of deep learning. You can have a look also at the awesome machine learning repository from GitHub, where you can find a lot of resources such as packages, applications, blog posts, etc. The third mistake is skipping exploratory data analysis. I've seen many data scientists getting quickly excited and jumping into the modeling part before properly and fully understanding the data. This is unfortunately a very common mistake. What junior data scientists don't probably know is that effective EDA gives a strong edge in both data science competitions or real-life projects. I personally use EDA for various reasons. For example, spotting anomalies and errors in the data, missing values, outliers, typos. Second, detecting correlations between variables and building the first intuitions about the problem. Third, formalizing the first questions to the business before further iteration. I know that EDA can be a tedious and long process because you have to build graphs, charts, and also analyze them. Hopefully there is a very powerful tool that you can use. It's open source, it's called Pandas Profiling, and basically this is a package that takes as input your data in a Pandas data frame, and then it automatically generates a report on this data. Basically, it will generate graphs, distributions, it will compute statistics, and then, for example, highlight some anomalies in the data, outliers, missing values, etc. And this is generated automatically for you so that you can focus on understanding the problem, designing the right cost function, and building your model. The fourth mistake is more or less linked to the way data scientists build their models. What I usually notice is that upon processing a first version of the dataset and cleaning it, 
Data scientists quickly start running intensive grid searches to optimize some model's parameters on a given task. Although this may work in a substantial amount of time, it's been proven that it's not the most efficient and quickest way to get a better score. What top machine learning practitioners recommend is spending time building and handcrafting predictive features instead of waiting a two-hour grid search to find parameters. This process is called feature engineering. Let's have an example here. If you want to predict, for example, house prices and have among the features the number of rooms and the number of windows, one additional feature that we can think about is the ratio of these two variables, which is basically the average number of windows per room. Feature engineering is an art by itself and highly depends on the problem and its complexity. It also requires research, interaction with external parties like the domain experts, for example, trying and iterating all over again. What I suggest that you have in mind here, guys, is that nowadays machine learning models are commodities that you can use off the shelf. And at the end of the day, a strong and stable solution is more a matter of smart feature engineering rather than total brute force. Now I understand that feature engineering can be hard. So that's why I wanted to show you a very powerful tool that can automate this process. This tool is called Feature Tools. It's an open source library written in Python that programmatically and automatically create features on tabular data. It's very popular, you can use it in different use cases. For example, if you go to the documentation, you can have access to many use cases like churn prediction, e-commerce, purchasing prediction, prediction the remaining useful life, taxi duration, etc. There are a lot of use cases. For example, if I click on this one, I will be redirected to the repository and then I will have access to the whole solution, the notebook and the way this package is used. So think about this package if you have tabular data, if you want to programmatically create features. So fifth mistake. This one is more or less linked to the way data scientists interact with the external world. As data scientists, we may believe that our tools and algorithms can solve all the problems at the heat of a Jupiter cell and without going from our comfort zone and leaving our chair. Well, as attractive as this sounds, this is rarely the case. Because constantly interacting and iterating with the experts is part of our job. And I can give you at least two reasons why. You need these people first because they give you insights and clues that you cannot see in the data. They have more history with the company, they know the data, they know how the data is produced and they can give you additional information that you cannot see in the features or in the variables. Second, these people need also to interact with you because you're building a solution for them, be it a model, an application or an API, and they need you because they need to learn how to use it from you. Well, the sixth mistake is not thinking about your model as part of a life cycle. This is something that is widely disregarded by data scientists, probably because more than half of the projects don't make it to production and stay at the proof of concept level. A machine learning life cycle starts from the business needs, then it goes through different steps, for example, data extraction and collection, model building and training, testing, and finally deploying to the client infrastructure and monitoring it. Each step has its own technical requirement, and even though as a data scientist you're most likely asked about data exploration and model building and training, having the global picture in mind can help you make the right choices in an early fashion. Let me just give you an example. If you're in a situation where you know that the infrastructure of the client is quite limited, you may think from an early stage about developing less complex models so that the deployment would be easier. Okay, this is a funny one. Thinking deep learning and big data is key to everything. In various projects, I've seen data scientists saying things like, we need more data, 
we need, probably need to install TensorFlow or PyTorch and try out a deep architecture. Maybe this will work better. Although these can be valid solutions, they can however be impractical for different reasons. You may, for example, not have more data to improve your model, or you may simply not afford GPUs to train deep learning models. But most importantly here, you should first consider simple solutions that achieve 80% of the work. Simple models are often underrated, and surprisingly, they do most of the job when they are tweaked in the right way. Being attracted to fancy models and sophisticated architectures and solutions is a pitfall a lot of data scientists fall into, and this is perpetuated by the mass media that shares a lot of misleading articles about deep learning and AI. So mistake number eight is considering that data science is different from software engineering. A common misconception among data scientists is thinking that it's not part of their job to produce quality code that gets delivered to the other teams. When data scientists stick to tools like Jupyter to the point of overusing them for everything, they neglect best practices that would sure improve their code otherwise. We're talking, for example, proper code versioning, unit testing, continuous integration and continuous delivery, and probably also dockerization of the application, orchestration, and deploying to a scalable infrastructure. These are software engineers' skills, and there's no reason why we shouldn't learn them as well, because at the end of the day, we're also software engineers. We are asked to build programs, APIs, and this artifact should integrate with the client infrastructure. So the last mistake and probably the most important one is neglecting communication skills. It's one thing to solve a data science problem, but it's another thing to efficiently communicate on it to a non-technical audience. When being a data scientist in an organization, presenting your findings to a business stakeholder is part of your job, and being able to make the shift between technical talk to highlighting a business value expressed in human terms is extremely valuable. You'll most likely always present your work to a business sponsor. These people are not technical and they never will be. They only listen to what matters to them. So my advice here, be clear, concise and straight to the point. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you like this content of this channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the thumbs up button and sharing this video. Thank you guys again and see you in next videos.